taken out mm. from me. You are free. Don't worry about any thought. You just sit for meditation. There are so many. And at that time, so many thoughts. You meditate. You just remember him. And you get so many thoughts. So they come in order to go. Don't worry. Once it so happened, the question hour, one incident I tell you, and <laughs> then I put the question hour. Right? Okay. Uh, so, it so happened that in 1954, Baba had declared that, uh, Baba, of course, uh, three quarter of the world is going to be wiped out. And then, of course, he would drop, he would uh, discard his alphabet board uh, uh, on 7th October. This, there was a declaration meeting. And in the declaration meeting on 30th September, he had declared that three quarter of the world will be wiped out. I am going to discard my alphabet board. Someone would step on my back and I will drop my body. I would remain in seclusion for four and a half months. Nobody should write to me and nobody should come to see me. And when this declaration Baba gave, people just got a shock. Now, we cannot write anything to him. We cannot see, see him. And he is going to drop his body. So the priest, priest means that those people who were with Upasani Maharaj, and they had come. And Baba says, this priest also, they have come, they cannot save me. They cannot save me. If he declares there, they are also not going to save me. They cannot do that. And people just thought, now, what will happen? So just before that, there is one week, I not to write letters to Baba about this. So, so many letters we received. And they said that, Baba, now you, you are going into seclusion, you are not going to see us, and you have asked us not to uh, write letters. So you are just uh, disconnecting, uh, disconnect, disconnecting us. You don't want to remain in contact, your contact will be disconnected. So on 7th October 1954, Baba asked that this is the last day, read out all the letters. And in every letter such thing was there. So Baba said that I am just right, she gave the message to me, write to them. And what was the message? This externally you find that I am disconnecting my, myself. But you have no idea that I am disconnecting externally, but internally I am bringing you closer and closer to me. So don't worry. I, I will be with you. I, I cannot disconnect, but you must know that I am with you. That's why this external connection, of course, I am yeah, I am stopping. How true this message is today. Today he is not abnormal, uh, physically present. How true that message is that now he has dropped his body. Why? Because he is taking us closer and closer. He is bringing the people closer and closer to him. How true this message is. And then what happened? Then his simple lovers from Hamirpur district, very innocent. So they thought that for four and a half months what we should do. So they thought that we must repeat God's name for four and a half months, continuously without a break. So they formed 12 groups. Each group had two hours. So 24 hours divided into 12 groups. 
and this chain was four and a half months. And this, they also said to later, before 7th October, that Baba, because now we will not be able to see you, we will not be able to write to you. So now we are doing this in order to remember you. When the letters came, 7th October, get out to, to him. And Baba says, see my lovers, what they are doing. And you people, means Mandi, you are all lazy. <laughs> you must also do it. We never did this. <laughs> During this, when we were with Baba, we never, where was the time to do that? There was no time. But Baba says, you must also do it. And Baba also allocated the hour. One hour to Erech, one hour to Pendu, one hour to Vishnu, one hour to Dr. Dilu, one hour to Dr. Dankin, then uh, of course Aloba one hour, and six hours to Baidu, 24 hours. But my time was very bad time. Lunch time. <laughs> and lunch time and I had to repeat God's name. So I would just sit on, on my bed. There was no chair, no, no table, nothing. In Merazad, you, you will find that my room was the best room. Chair and good bed and everything. But in other places, of course, no, nothing. There would be nothing just to sleep on the floor. So I would just sit on my bedding and close my eyes and in a, in, in a posture and I would repeat God's name. Not even half a minute <laughs> and a thought would come, lunch must be ready. <laughs> <laughs> but I went on repeating God's name, they must have started eating. <laughs> <laughs> the third thought, whether the food will remain for me. <laughs> <laughs> then other thoughts, of course I have got to write so many letters. What should I write to this man, that man? So many thoughts at that time. And when one hour would be over, I would feel very much disappointed that these thoughts, in a natural way, of course, they don't come. But generally, when I start repeating God's name, at that time, of course, more and more thoughts. And every day, I would get, get up disappointed. <laughs> now, what happened one day, I was doing this, thoughts were coming. So then I thought, in my meditation, that today I must tell Baba that He should exempt me from this because I cannot do it. More and more thoughts come at this time. And when this thought came, someone knocked at my head and I opened my eyes. Baba was there. And I said, Baba, please just exempt me from this. He said, Why? I said that I get many thoughts at that time. What is my order? I said to your order is just to repeat God's name. Did I ask you to stop your mind? Let the mind work. Let the mind work. I did not ask you. I asked you to repeat God's name and you are repeating. You are obeying my orders. So my order you are obeying, so why do you worry? Let the mind create thoughts. Mind does its work. You do your work. Why do you worry about this? And then Baba gave a very good simile. And what is that simile? Baba says, when there are mosquitoes, what do you do? At night, of course, you fix mosquito curtain. And you remain inside the mosquito curtain. Still the mosquitoes are there. And they create noise. You hear the buzzing sound, but because the curtain is there, they cannot come and bite you. So also, 
when you repeat my name, mm. then what happens? You have the curtain of my love around your heart. And what are the mosquitoes? Your thoughts and desires. Whether they can bite you when the curtain of love is there? No, because you are following my, my order. You are doing not on your own, but it is my order. You are following this. So don't worry about that. This is a very important thing. Very important thing. So mind, mind will work. Mind will not stop. Mind must get tired. And that's why all these thoughts, when you come, more and more thoughts, never worry about. Just remember him in a natural way. Don't worry. That's why he says, even once if you remember me, I'm, that is sufficient for me. So much assurance he has given. So much assurance that because he has taken upon the responsibility of the individual. When this, this last phase of his seclusion from 1967, he started, he was just taking the burden. Why he, he was getting um, spasm after spasm? Why he was suffering? Because he was taking the burden of everyone. No one realized it. So Baba says that Maya is killing me, but I will win. And the day, 31st January 1969, in the morning he said, Maya is killing me, but I will win. Maya means illusion. And of course that day he dropped his body. People will think that yes, Baba, of course, Maya killed him, but it is not so. What happened? He had completed his work on 30th January. 31st January, he was releasing that work. Who was resisting? Maya in everyone. Illusion in everyone, the false self of everyone was resisting because he was releasing his work for everyone. So that resistance and that's why he was suffering and suffering. He did his work. He did his work and after his universal work was completed at that time, so long he was in physical body, what work he had to do during that period that he completed and he got the work. Now, what he has done at that time, he has released the arrow, arrow of his work. And that arrow has started moving and moving and touching the heart after heart. And because of that arrow, that your heart is touched, so you have come to him. And that that, that will touch every heart of the world, of all, all human beings. It is just moving. Moving and moving, it will go on moving for hundred years and touch the heart of everyone. And the world will come to him. So this time Baba has said that his manifestation will be the greatest. Greatest manifestation that means every heart will be touched by the arrow which he has released. It will be quite different time, but till the most difficult period we have to pass through it. Don't worry, he will take care. He will take care. Now we are free to ask questions. <laughs> Sorry. That, that God can't forgive. 
and that's hypocrisy. Really good question. And my question is, first of all, how could, it's impossible not to be hypocritical. And I wanted to know if maybe, is this the original sin that was talked about in the Bible? That hypocrisy, Baba has said, God does not forgive hypocrisy. And that is the truth. But here, I just give you an example. There was one person, his name was Manikmeta. He was from Bombay. So he would come to Baba from, uh, from time to time. And of course, one day, he says to Baba, Baba, should I just work for you? Tell the people about you. Baba says, yes, do it. So then of course he would tell Baba and he collected one group. He would not allow anyone to go to Baba directly. When he would come, he would bring the group. And then of course he would introduce himself. And Baba would just appreciate, just see Manik Mehta, how he loves me and how he obeys me. He has brought so many people. Always Baba would praise him. Then one day Manik Mehta came with the group. He introduced everyone. And then, Baba, and then he says to Baba, Baba, all these people are there in the group. And there should be something some place for them to sit. So there is no place. We need a big hall. He says, go ahead and construct. And Baba helped for that. So a big hall was constructed. And then this Manik Mehta became a master. They would come because they, they would go to Baba and Baba would appreciate him. So they thought that Manik Mehta is something very great. So they would follow and he would not allow anyone to come to Baba. Now, one day when he said, he came along with the group and Baba appreciated him, there was one person from Bombay and he knew what Manik Mehta was doing there. He has become a master. So he was thinking whether Baba knows what he is doing there. But he did not know what the avatar would do for him. And Baba would just go on, he would go on appreciating. Now comes new life. New life, so even to the Mandi Baba had said that I will not ask anyone to join new life. It is a very difficult thing. If you die, then I'm, I will not be responsible for that. I will not take care, uh, care of anyone. You will die? Uh, yes, die. But no connection with the world. Wherever I go, you have to follow. And it is very, very difficult life. So I don't say anyone that you join me. And he sends letter to Manik Mehta, he called him. And he says, Manik, this phase is very important phase of my life. And because I love you very much, I don't want that you should miss this phase. You must join it. And he says, Baba, I want to join it very much. But what about the group? Baba says, don't worry about the group. I will look after the group. No, no, Baba, but some arrangements should be made. Baba said, what arrangement? He says, something, of course, so that they may, uh, they may continue the activities. Baba said, you will not be able to return. This new life is that, of course, there is no guarantee. Then how, how can you make arrangement? He said, yes, yes, I will make some arrangement. I want some time. How much time do you want? Six months. Baba says, give. All right, whatever arrangement you want to make, you make. 
and nobody would know where I was, where I am going, no one. And of course those who would come with me, even in the Mandi Yakus, I have said that if anyone wants to do this, he must think that he, he, has, he has died for the world and he is free only to obey my order. Only thing, no connection with the world. So he said, I give you six months. And on six months, this date of course, six months ends here. Before, just few days before, I will inform you through telegram that I am here and you come and join me. Will you do it? He said, yes, I will do it. I was all right. You are the only exceptional case where I am giving you this, uh, this facility. Others, they will not. Baba left her new life and he would just walk the distance, make her food and live under the tree at night. From here thousands of miles he walked and went to a place of, um, a place where there was Kumbh Mela. Kumbh Mela that means where it comes after 12 years. Ganges is there, river Ganges, Haridwar. And then thousands and thousands of sadhus and swamis, they come there. So for that purpose, Baba went there, begging, walking, and just sleeping under the trees. Now, Baba went to Banaras. And Banaras, from there six months ended. Not ended, just few days were there for six months. Completion. And he sent a telegram to Manik Mehta that now I am here and you come within uh, within two, day, two days because such and such date I would not be here. He did not come. Then of course after reaching the place where the Kumbhavela was there, so Baba had selected one place when he went there. Another telegram Baba said, how complacent it is. Then he sent another telegram, still Manik Mehta did not give any reply, did not come. And then he was, the group was there, and group was there and he was giving discourses and this and that, and he, he was the master. It went on and on. And then afterwards what happened? Baba came back from new life. And Baba was at Mehrazas. One day one person from the group came to Ahmad Nagar and he came to know that Mehr Baba has come down to Mehrazas. So he thought, why should I not go and see him? Manik Mehta does not want that. <coughs> If I have come here, so why not to go to Mehraza? So he came. He came and Baba met him, embraced him, and he was sitting there. And he, he, he saw that the atmosphere was quite different. People would talk, laugh, everything. And he said, this Manik Mehta, he said, according to Baba's instruction, you must sit like this. For the master, of course, you cannot sit like this. You must sit like this. You must obey this. Do, do like this. Bow down like this. You have no bind down, nothing. Baba just embraced me. So he went back, told others that whatever Manik Mehta says, that is not the thing. Mehra Baba never asked anyone to sit like this in a posture of this, no, I went there, it was so lovely and pleasant atmosphere. So one by one came to Baba, <coughs> left Manik Mehta. What did he got, uh, what did he get? Empty heart without soul. He got it. Now Baba goes to Bombay and there was Darshan program. So thousands of people came came in a queue 
Malik Nital Sukhi. Malik Nital Sukhi and he brought one garland in his head. Now what happens? He approached Baba. He garlanded him. And in his ear, he said, Baba, thank you. Me. So that nobody should hear that. And Baba says, forgive me. So God does not forgive hypocrisy, but Avatar does. Avatar <laughs> <laughs> does. And that's why I say that whatever people of course, they reject him, they abuse him, but they are after all his children. So he has to look after them. So he cannot ignore him. Is that compassionate water? No, no, father. And we are just following him how powerful we are. But your question, really good question, you asked. Maybe hmm? <laughs> Maybe maybe worry. Your email. <laughs> <laughs> My email? <laughs> the God does not tell you. But I did not do this. If that this happened, this incident is not there. Hmm? The story right. just oh, oh no. The story helps. All right. <laughs> now, any other question? I was thinking that there are many questions. <laughs> we have one. Questions. Me? Yeah. How to wait for the Oh, come on. You're setting me up again. Why am I always getting set up, Bob? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's your question. <laughs> because you are my doctor sister. <laughs> They're saying in the news that people shouldn't um, travel to India now. Mm. What, what do you say about that? Yeah. Not only that, but now you must have received the email and it will also appear in Tevhan Talk, which comes, everyone can see Tevhan Talk. So just now, yesterday only, I received email come back seeing that we all sit together even Meraza Bandi also accepted this that the situation is very very serious very very serious and uh, of course the foreigners should not come because America uh, 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 England England also Australia only one has informed that no one should go to India and those who are already there, they should come back. Really? Yeah. Really? They're asking the foreigners to leave? Now that they have to come to Yes, government, yes. government. You and also. Ah, yes. yes. So then, of course, uh, they say to me, for approval, and I said, what to do now? My approval. They have all decided this and said for my approval. So how I can discourage them? It is not good. But then Gary Kleiner, he is here and he has to go back. So someone from here informed him through phone that uh, Bhagma, of course, this is the situation and you should not go back. So he phoned me and he said, what should I do now? I said, what do you think? He said, I spent 25 years there and it is not possible for me to stay here. I said, you are really brave, go. Mm -hmm. Nobody will stop you. And then I wrote back to Pat that if you send this as day one talk or send email to those who are going, I have no objection. But if faith is there, 
and they are going to God's home. So, if they want, they should decide. They should also be free. So, we just make a little change. So she said that we will take, we will just give them a hint from time to time being in fun. I said, so whatever you like. <laughs> Somebody asked me whether you will return, you will go back. So definitely I will go back. But if such thing happens, if war happens, I said one day I will die. It is a definite thing. So I have to worry about this. I must die one if it is destined, it's a, if it is Baba's wish, of course um, um, it, it will happen according to his wish. So I am accepting his wish. But he did not ask me not to go. So I must go. So it depends upon everyone. Whatever he thinks it is good for him or her, one is just do it. It is not that because the war, any, any day, of course, one has to drop the body, die. So I worry about this. What is this body? Just nothing. Else. One day everyone drops it. No one, no one has come just to live eternally in this body. Eternally only one is, but this body is not eternal. No. So it depends on, you want to go? Very good. You are brave. I appreciate. This is just, you know, the situation there. And because of the situation, and they, why they say this? Because I am in charge. It is going this through trust. So the trust, I am responsible for that. So my approval is necessary. I said, go ahead, do it. But because you are asking me, I am just telling you the truth. Whatever I feel, but whatever you feel, do accordingly. Anything? My brother George, in my heart and I was telling you about this earlier um, and Sheila helped me with this but I think this is something that you could speak to the group about um, Sheila told us some wonderful stories the other night about how Baba helped her to have faith when she had doubts just to do that that story was very powerful to me, the story of when she had sent the form to you and Neherazad to sign for her school and in that British school system in order to advance to the next class, the father had to sign but you were living with Baba and Neherazad, she was living in the trust compound with Adi and uh, she and her brother sent the forms to you and the brother's form came back and hers did not. She was worried about it. She went to school and the teacher pulled her aside. She said, why don't you have your form? I'm sorry I haven't received it yet. I'm giving you a warning now. If you don't bring it in tomorrow, you're out of the school and you won't be able to come back for a year. And she waited. No form. She went back to the school. She was pulled aside. She said, now yesterday we gave you the warning and now you're out. And she went home very upset and I'm making a long story short, this is a little girl who, Sheila, you were what, 11 years old at the time? Something like that? 13, 14? And, you know, to lose a year in school and to be separated from your friends and to, you know, uh, have to go to the junior class afterwards if you can go back to the same school, all of those things, very, very upsetting. And she went back to the trust compound. Adi was not there. Her mother was not there. Her brother was still in school. And she had a tantrum. And she started cursing out Baba and saying, you know, you cannot possibly be God. You wouldn't let this happen to me. And she told us 
I said things to Baba that day that I would never want to repeat. <laughs> and she was crying and she was very upset. And, you know, when she told the story, I, could, I felt it. I could understand that completely. And her mother came back. She said, what are you doing home from school? She told the story. I've been kicked out. Nothing that you can do now is going to help. Adi can go and talk to them. That won't help. And uh, very upset. And her mom and uh, I think later on Adi, if I remember the story correctly, they didn't give much importance. And I think it was the next morning, Sheila, that Adi knocked on your door? No. What happened? My mother, it wasn't a big deal for her yeah. at all. Yeah. She said, okay, I'll tell Adi. And she takes her grocery and puts it in the kitchen. In the kitchen, right. And she starts working. I said, God, she doesn't take seriously. She doesn't know, you know, this is a serious matter. And I was trying to tell her, but she would listen. She said, okay, let Adi come and I will tell. I'll go and tell him. I said, he isn't at home, you know. He went somewhere, I don't know. So I was waiting and waiting, you know, up to 10 o'clock, night time. And then I went to bed because Adi did not come back. But early in the morning, 5 o'clock, somebody was knocking on the door, calling with my name. Sheila, Sheila, get up. They used to call me baby, baby. So he was calling, baby, baby, get up. I said, yeah, who is there in the morning? It's like Adi's voice, but why you come early in the morning? He said, I opened the door and I said, what? Get ready. We have to go to school. To your school. I will drop you. I said, you don't know what happened. He said, I know everything Baba told me. You don't have to worry. Uh, I'm worried about my breakfast. I to go and eat. Without that, you know, I cannot take you. Adi was a good eater and he really wanted me. <laughs> <laughs> he did not care about my matter to this, you know, have an hour and, you know, spend time with me. So he leaves. And uh, he he started eating. I started get, you know getting ready. I put on clothes, everything. He brought the car. I sat in the car, and I I was trying to tell Adi, do you know? What? And he said, I know, I know. You know, he was right. I know everything. Baba told me. So what does the Baba will tell me? And I did not tell him about Baba anything in the house. Maybe he doesn't know. But there we go. And he goes, in uh, India, you cannot enter in, uh, you know, your teacher's office unless they call you. So I was standing out, Adi goes inside, talked with this woman, and that woman <coughs> comes out. She said, no problem. She was so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> the day she kicked me out, she was like a lion, you know. I felt like, you know, God, she is so horrible person I've ever met in my life, you know. <laughs> she's shouting at me and uh, saying, you know, take your bag and go out. You know, I don't want to see you. Like, you know, she did not want to listen. And here, you know, she goes and says, what are you must have done? God knows. But he said something that she was like, you know, so sweet. She takes me in the class. I sit in the but. I forgot to tell you, you know, when I was coming, Adi said, uh, oh, there's a letter for you, you know, uh, from Baba. Which one Baba is to tell my dad, you know, to write. So there was a letter, and uh, he said last night there wasn't time to give you, so I forgot, so you can read. So I put in my bag, you know, I did not have time to read, you know, when the, everything happened. And after that, I come home, I remember that letter. So I opened that, and you won't believe, you know, the first line was, Sheila, you believe, or don't believe, but I'm God. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I really jumped, and I said, and whatever I said, you know, bad thing, all answer were there. And it was really big and long, <laughs> and two, two, three pages, never got in like a paper in my life. And I just started reading, you know, I said, God, I shouldn't show anybody. This is a bad way. 
everybody will ask me, you know, why. And my mother comes, you know, right that time, she said, I want to read that. You know, I said, no, that is for me, not for you. She said, no, but this is from Baba. So we share. And she takes the script <laughs> reading. I said, strange. What? Did you say anything to Baba? <laughs> yes, I said, <laughs> well, when I heard that story, uh, I, I felt what a grace it is to be convicted in that way. Yes, that is true. To, uh, to have that kind of support from the Lord, to believe, to crush all doubt forever. That's right. And what I was telling you before, and you know, we often hear Baba saying in his writings, don't come to me for help. Don't ask for help. Don't ask me to change your circumstances or to improve your lot. Just accept it. And then we get these marvelous books from Balnatu, Tales of Meher Baba's Love, and you look at one after the other, and not only in that book, but many other books. And many of the lovers, East and West, are saying, how Baba helped me in this, how Baba helped me in that, how I asked for Baba's help to get out of prison, and that I made a, a pact with him, because a lot of people were being released. How would I know that it was going to be him, and not a coincidence? They would have to release me at 5 in the morning before dawn. <laughs> You know, and the governor of the prison doesn't come until 10 in the morning and has to sign the papers. Impossible except for God. And then it happens. You know. So we see these stories time after time of lovers asking for Baba's intercession. And then on the other hand, Baba saying, don't ask me to intercede. Bow. Resolve that conflict. <laughs> um, I tell you that... In 1961, Baba got herpes, and Dr. Khaver home, Dr. Uh, Nariman, who was in Bombay Industrial, so she phoned that bring any topmost uh, neurologist. So this Dr. Ram Ginde was the topmost neurologist there, so he went to him. And he said that Mehrba, of course, he has got herpes. And um, he want, uh, I, have, uh, I have been asked to take you there. He said, no, I cannot go. Because my work, of course, I am resident doctor here. So I cannot leave the patient and go to that place, Ahmadnagar, so far away from here. And uh, Nariman, of course, insisted, you must, you must come. So then he came. Now when he came, he came to Nairagad at about 2 o'clock. And as soon as he came, he was taken to Baba's room. And Baba looks at Nariman and says, why did you bring him? The doctor, of course, he has got his hospital. He is in charge of all these patients, so you brought him here. Who will look after there? But what has happened to me? Nothing. I am alright. So take him back. Take him back and comfortably so that tomorrow he, he may be able to attend the patients. Now doctor himself says, Baba, I have come. So now at least let me examine you. Baba says five minutes, not more than that. <laughs> so five minutes after she gave one injection and he left. He left, he went back. And then what happens? After seven days, he phones Nariman asking him how is Meher Baba. He 
said that you must be all right because I did not get any information. So he said, I want to examine him. So he was very, very happy. Everyone was very happy. First, of course, the doctor would not want to go there. And now he is ready to examine him. So he phoned Bhavir. The doctor wants to examine him. Baba and um, um, Baba permits, I will bring him. So Bhavir asks Baba, and Baba says, no, he should just take care of the patients. Tell him that I am all right, there is nothing wrong. So Nariman told him. And the doctor says, that how should I look after the patients? I have become his patient. So unless I see my doctor, I will not be able to work. And then Nariman informed Baba, so I said, all right, let him come for five minutes. <coughs> so he came. When he came, he said, Baba, please allow me to be here for three days. I just feel so restless without you. Three days. Baba would not allow anyone to be at Mehrazad. You sent to Mehrabad. But he allowed, all right, three days, be here. Now, in the evening time, our dinner came, our dinner best of quality, rice and dal. <laughs> if you want any change, you dal, dal and rice. <laughs> but Baba had already given order to women Mandi that the food should be sent for doctor from here. So his food also came. And he looks at our food, he says, no, I don't want to eat whatever you, you are eating, I will eat the same thing. I want to be like Mandi here three days, so I must act like Mandi. And Baba was in calm. And Baba says, all right, you, today you eat. From tomorrow, whatever you want to do, you do. So the, he ate, but next day, of course, he would eat our food and he will also clean his plate, he would also clean his room, everything he would do like Manali. After three days, Baba said, now you go back and never come here, mm. never come. When I go to Pune, I will inform on, on, on weekend, every weekend, if you find time, then you come. You are free to come to Pune, not here. Mm -hmm. So he left. It happened in December. Now, every year on 15th March, Baba would go to Pune. So Baba went to Pune. And then what happens? He was in farm. So first weekend, he would not want to just leave it. So he came. He came along with one couple and one child of eight years. And Baba embraced each one. Doctor sat near Baba and those people, they were just in front of, they were sitting there. And he says, Baba, I tell you the truth. Now this, these people, they are the industrialists industrialist and they have got only one son but what happened he fell down from the eighth floor of the house and his skull was broken he was almost dead and these people they brought this boy to me and they said the doctor do anything whatever you you want to do whatever the expenditure don't worry please do and save his life and they were weeping and weeping. Mm. And I examined him, there was no hope. I said, what to do now? What to do? How to console the parents? Of course, I cannot do anything. I can, how can I say? So he said that I told to take him to the operation theatre. And I just wanted to do just to show them that I am doing something. 
so that the parents may think that they did something for the child. But when he started surgery, eight hours, Baba, 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 continuously. So he said, oh, now this child is a Siva. You saved him. And Baba says, it is just the news to me. I did not know anything about this. It was your faith that cured him. He would not, he would do different things. But he would not want to say that I did this and I did that. No. He would not give any importance to any miracle. Because there is only one miracle that he has created the creation. And another miracle which he performs, he gives the real experience. Real experience. Other thing, whatever happens, of course he says, oh, I don't know. I don't know, it is because of your faith it has happened. So that is Nehavar. Mm -hmm. Never, never he gave importance to any, anything. He would do everything. So many things he had done. And so many people would attribute the, uh, um, the experience they would have. And Baba said, no, I did not do it. It is because of your faith it happened to me. So we can, we can ask for his help? When you depend upon him, you belong to him, he belongs to you. So whatever you want to say to him, just say, say out. Just leave it to him, all right. If you want, do it. If you don't want, don't do it. But this is the way I remember you. This is the way I remember you and that's why I am putting my difficulty before you. If you think that it is alright, so it is alright for me. But I must tell you, because sometimes you are very deaf. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. Good. has in their life, say, some um, trauma or anxiety that causes them Money. problems. Money. Come. This causes them problems in their life. Come. Do you think that it's better for them to have some medication or some medical help? Or do you think this is their sanskaras and they need to deal with this? No, medical help. Medical help must be arranged. It is not that Sanskaras, yes, sanskaras, because of the sanskaras it happens. But there are three types of sanskaras. And three types, one is called prarabdha, another is called vidyanik, and third is called yoga yoga. Three types of impressions. Then there is another type, natural, non-natural, and unnatural. Now non-natural and uh, natural. What is natural? Of course you don't know. You just do things of whatever you like. But not according to his wish. So they are called natural, um, um, unnatural transparas. When you do something according to his wish, they are called natural sanskaras. Then what is non-natural sanskaras? They are virus all over the atmosphere. So virus, of course, different types of virus are there. So virus diseases are there. So these impressions are also in the atmosphere. You catch hold of this. Just like cold, Cold you get of course, why if some someone has cold, so you just keep away from that. Because if you come in contact that means you will get cold. So th this this happens because of non-natural impressions. And these non-natural impressions, 
then of course, because you don't catch through your deeds or thoughts, you just um, collect these impressions from the atmosphere. So for them, that's why medical treatment is there. So the medical treatment we must be used. When Baba expressed this on 10th July 1958, and in that, of course, Baba has said that if you are happy, think that yes, God has, it is because of God you are happy. When you are suffering, you think yes, God has given you suffering, so you are suffering, you are suffering. After this, so there was one meeting on 10th July 1958. That was the only day when nobody observed silence because there was meeting. So nobody, Baba did not ask to uh, observe silence. Meeting was there. And this, if you read this uh, Baba's wish, six points are there. I will ask him to read out. So then, of course, that people return and one person he had come from South India he became seriously ill seriously ill and family members they wanted to take him to hospital he said why do you want to take me to hospital because you are suffering so this is Baba's wish that I am suffering so why do you want to take me to hospital he would not want to go so then uh, the family members they sent long, long telegram to Uba that this man is not going to hospital. And Baba says, yes, I am happy that you are suffering. And But I did not say that when you are suffering, you are ill, you should not take medical treatment. Who has created all this? I have created. So why not? You, uh, you should take the treatment, go there and take treatment. There is nothing, it is according to my wish. So don't think that I, when you suffer, you should not take any treatment. No treatment you should take. So it is good that you are given treatment. So don't worry about that. Treatment should not, you should not think that treatment is not good, we should not be. But no way that it is because of the sanskaras, no doubt. Because of the sanskaras, it happens. But for that, treatments are there. For illness, treatment is there. So I went to hospital so many times. I went through surgery, passed through surgery three, four times. And when Baba was there at that time, I was also sent to hospital and Baba came to see me in the hospital. He came. My surgery was there and he came in the hospital. So he himself, uh, he himself arranged to go to hospital. So don't worry about that. Whatever the impression sanskaras are there, so it happens according to that also certain diseases because of the sanskaras. But the virus, this is also, this, this is not sanskaras, but it happens. It happens and then of course you take treatment and you are all right. There are certain diseases you inherit it. You inherit that. But for that also you must take treatment just like diabetes. So why should I take treatment? So it is not good. Whatever is available, treatment is available, you must take. Don't worry about that. I have another question. Thank mm. you. Um, and this relates to, to my daughter. Is it, with her condition, her autism, I feel, very, I feel a lot of struggle with asking Baba to help her or to help her to be healed or to come out of her autism because I, I struggle with um, her need to be in that state. So I don't know how, how, how to feel comfortable with that. You 
Bhogan asking him, Bhogan telling him, because you depend upon him, so to whom you should tell, tell him. If it is good for her, he will do it. If it is not good and if suffering is there, then of course he will just say, wait, he will wait. There was one girl uh, at Ahmad Nagar, the whole family of course, uh, uh, heiress, maternal uncle, very big family at Ahmad Nagar. So one girl, she would not be able to walk and she would not be able to move about all the time in the bed. And Baba went to her. And Baba said, what do you want? Do you want me or do you want to get well? Mm -hmm. And she said, yes, I want you. So then you have to suffer. Said, yes, I am ready. But what Baba gave the courage. She would, while lying in the bed, she would not be able to get up. People, of course, would just help her. So, but she would remain so happy and cheerful throughout. What a gift she got. But she said, I want you. And Baba gave him himself. Give her himself. Very, very happy, cheerful. Um, did you see her, Shiva? Dhan, Dhan. Who was it? Dhan. No. No. I think it was in, in one of the movies. It was even when uh, Darshan. Carry, carry yeah, they yeah. carried her. Ah, yes. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 she was brought um, for Baba Darshan. And uh, someone lifted her and brought her to Baba. All the time, very, very happy. I, I remember hearing about her, about her asking Baba um, for some healing, and, and I heard that Baba said to her, I can take this from you, but if I do, then you'll have to do it again. And, and then she said, let it be. Is, is this right, what I heard? No, Baba asked her, do you want me? Or do you, do you want to get well? So the other thing was... So he said, I want you. Mm -hmm. So then Baba said, then of course you have to suffer. Mm -hmm. said, I am ready to suffer, but I want you. And then Baba said, I am so happy. But he gave him the gift. That she would remain always happy and cheerful. People would go many, uh, very serve our brain. Glenn? 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 Glenn is being uh, called. There he is. Glenn, did you see Dhan? I did, sure. Hmm. So, you would go to her. He knows, knows her. He would go, not only Glenn, but many people would go to, to her. And she would always remain happy and cheerful. Happy and cheerful. Though she was suffering, she would not be able to get up. But always happy and cheerful. What a gift Baba gave her. And she would not just say that I am suffering or I have got this trouble, that trouble. No talk about the suffering. Nothing. She is the witness. Because yeah, amazing. Yes. She loved hearing about the and wasn't her sister just like that? I never saw her sister. Uh, her sister also died. She died. Oh, I, was it her brother? Was it her brother? Brother. Brother, 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 yeah. brother also died. Yeah. But brother also, he would come to Baba, he would just um, um, in a horse carriage, he would himself take the horse carriage. And of um, course, very old, very, because Baba also helped, helped him. But he died. But Dhan was the last one. Yeah. She remained there how many years? But always happy and cheerful. Mm -hmm. Always happy and cheerful. So this happens, mm -hmm. it, it is correct that it happens according to sanskaras, past sanskaras. And Prabhupada said that 
praying for healing and helping is 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 not meddling or interfering or, or you are just free to do anything and don't think that I'm you are doing something wrong. Just see that if something you can do her, do her relief. So you are allowed to do that. Don't think that you are meddling with that. No. Nothing. Because that is his his instruction that whatever medical help you can get, you get. You should not talk just um, Often for that, no, no, you must. Now, what is the wish? Okay. <coughs> my wish? Ah, yes, after this. Yeah. My wish. Baba said, the lover has to keep the wish of the beloved. My wish for my lovers is as follows. One, do not shirk your responsibilities. Two, attend faithfully to your worldly duties to keep always in the back of your mind that all this is Baba's. Three, when you feel happy, think Baba wants me to be happy. When you suffer, think Baba wants me to suffer. Four, be resigned to every situation and think honestly and sincerely Baba has placed me in this situation. Five, with the understanding that Baba is in everyone, try to help and serve others. Six, I say with my divine authority to each and all that whosoever takes my name at the time of breathing his last comes to me. So do not forget to remember me in your last moment. Unless you start remembering me from now on, it will be difficult to remember me when your end approaches. You should start practicing from now on. Even if you take my name only once every day, you will not forget to remember me in your dying moments. So this, this is his wish. And of course, so the medical facilities, whatever is provided, you must take um, benefit of that. Don't worry. And leave everything to him. You are doing your duty, and of course, leave everything to him. There is one case I am going to deal with that in LA. And I have received this one wife, really very handsome, cute, four years old. And he is also like that. So when I just remembered you, so of course what happens, people don't understand this. The boy, of course, when mother goes to the center, so she takes the boy and the boy of course makes noise so others they don't like they don't like that so the mother feels very bad so she stopped going to the center and I have got the report I am going to deal with them telling them that no, no, you should not he makes the noise or this so just just take him here, there, but don't, don't stop her. How mother, mother's heart, how she must be feeling when the child is in, in that condition and others will stop expressing the love towards him if they just express hatred. So that is not good. Um. Five minutes? Five minutes. We have oh. one more question here, Baba. Oh. 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 Yes. Did Baba, do you ever have a dream? Did Baba ever come to you in a dream? Hmm? Dream? Oh. Yes. Previously, of course, uh, he did come. When he had given me uh, writing work, he did not explain. So he did not explain and I was just thinking. He dropped his body. So I was thinking what to do now. So one night of course he appeared in my dream and he said, you want explanation? Now here is the board. The board was there, read it. And I was so happy, I was just 
wanted to read and he disappeared. <laughs> he dis disappeared. But the dream gave me the strength that Baba has given me something I must try. So I tried and that's why you see all these books. Lord Behar and then Dr. Baba did nothing and the only thing. That was a very difficult book. He had given only the points, he did not give me explanation. So I did it. So dream of course, those dreams which help you to make a spiritual progress, they are good dreams. Otherwise, the dreams whether good or bad, they are after all dreams and they are always false. So, but such dreams which give you push towards him, such, such things are really important. Mani, of course, she had written a book on, on her dreams. So, that, that is not, that, that dream just like now, I am happy, I am very rich man, and I am in big palace and this. No, different dream, which gives inner joy. Inner joy. Inner joy. Now, yes, page number. <laughs> he always writes me some uh, letters saying that page number so and so. <laughs> <laughs> so he <laughs> makes page, page number. Page <laughs> number. <laughs> you know, I was just wondering, um, uh, Ziggy just asked about physical problems. Um, quite often one will have financial difficulties, um, which you think for necessities maybe, and that can be all sorts of things. Would one approach Baba asking for financial assistance? Or how would you do that? You do anything. Ask anything. But just leave it to him. If he wishes, he should give. If he does not, you know that it is not his, his wish. But make it as the medium for his remembrance. Make it the medium of his remembrance. Medium of his remembrance. Oh, okay. That's beautiful. When you ask him, you so think that I yeah, of course it is for you yeah. to give or not to give. Mm -hmm. This is my medium to remember you, it goes very easy for me yeah. to uh -huh. remember. That's very helpful. <laughs> okay. That's helpful. Yeah. Exactly. And someone can put Baba said, I didn't do this, but it was your faith in me that did that. One can put positive faith in Baba for the things that one has to do with in life. Yeah. So, so yeah. faith that I'll do this, and the, if it's money, that I'll do this work, the money will come, everything will be taken care of. What's that? Yes, of course, sir, Mom. you can say anything I tell you. Mm -hmm. You are free. <laughs> when you depend upon, fully upon him, and he is our compassionate father, to whom you should go. Mm. So it is not bad to ask him. You ask, but just think that now it is for you. To give me this, I don't give. But I will remember you through this medium. Mm. It is very easy medium. That's, that's very helpful. That's very helpful. Mm -hmm. I, I don't quite understand what you mean about remembering him through this medium. Explain. When you are asking him something, please Baba give me something, and he does not give, so you should not feel worried about it. On the contrary, when you think, say, when you think that I remember you through this, otherwise I don't remember, I forget you, but when I find some difficulty, then I remember, so I asked you for this purpose. It is for you to give or not. Don't worry. Tell him, don't worry. Sometimes I will also tell him that don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but the important thing is the remembrance through those circumstances, not the circumstances themselves. It's the remembrance. Yeah. Yeah. It's the remembrance of him. That is true. That's with the motive. 
asking for guidance. When I go through my day at work, and even the smallest thing. That's why oh, I'm. What, should I do this? I'm, I'm, do I'm just giving you full liberty. <laughs> full liberty. I have got full liberty also from him. I also do it. Previously, of course, many times I would do, but now it is rare. Very rare. But this is not good. When you depend upon him, so whom you will approach? Only him, thinking that he is everything for me. So you approach, and if you ask him, that is not right. In your case, Eric, I mean, uh, about, uh, you know, we tend to look at you, Mandalu, as spiritual athletes. <laughs> and maybe it's a kind of... Almost at the finish line. Yeah, and uh, it's a kind of racket because that lets us kind of get off the hook and say they're the athletes, we're the audience back here. But from my perspective, the way that you wrote Lord Mayer is an example of spiritual athleticism and it seems to me that Baba gave you the strength that is true. to do that. Could you just could you just say a few words about that experience of how that came through? Actually, you know, I was not a writer and I was not a poet. So when I came to Baba, I never thought that Baba would ask me to write. So first thing he gave me correspondence. So I was dealing with correspondence. And in 1959 we were in Pune, and he asked someone from Pune that he should write a play in Marathi on him. And he tried and tried, but he could not write. Then we came down to Meraza. And one day again, Baba, that um, uh, the topic he brought, that there should be one play in Hindi. And as I was not a writer, I did not say anything. So he said, why don't you write? And I said, Baba, I don't know anything about writing a play. I never wrote and I never thought about it. I can't, cannot write. So Baba says, this is not my order, just try. Right. When he said try, I felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. In the evening, when I went to him, Baba says, how many pages did you write? I said, I did not write anything. Why? I said, that was not your order. Baba said, did I not ask you to try? That was my order. Why did you not try? And he was after me, so anyway I wrote a play. Now play that play was, of course I read out to him, every day he would come to my room and he would just ask me to read out. And he was excellent. <laughs> and then of course when I wrote, he just sent it for, for printing. And then after a few days he says to me, I want you to write songs. No, no, so he said that I want that play was very good, but there should be some songs. I said, Baba, I who will write the songs. He says, You suggest. So I suggested the name on different poets. He said to me, All right, write them the letters. So I wrote an evil poet. And when of course, I got the reply read out to him, I said, don't write them again. Don't write them again. What is this? They are writing, what is that? It is dry. Only the language, there is nothing. The writing should be just like wave in the ocean. The writing does not create, cannot create, to create the wave in the ocean. So you write. So I wrote four or five songs. They were not very good songs. But they were excellent. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course he said that send to the, uh, uh, to whom who 
who was dealing with the printing. And then of course after a few days, I want you to write hundred songs. I said, Baba, I don't know anything. Never use that language. When I asked you to write a play, you said, I don't know. Never use that language, just write. So I wrote hundred songs, one after another. Then he would say, write this, write that. Then one day, one night, when I was um, keeping work, he said that uh, I want you to translate everything and nothing uh, into Hindi. I said, yes, I will do that. But it should be very, very interesting. I said, Baba, if it is interesting in uh, English, it will be interesting in Hindi. I was said, that I don't know, but it should be very, very interesting. <laughs> I said, Baba, I don't understand. You want me to translate this into Hindi? I will do it. I will use very simple language. But testing, of course, um, how, how to make it interesting? He said, think over that. And I thought more that in next day, of course, I thought that I must put the discourse in conversation so that I may add so many things there to make it interesting. And he came in my room, said, did you start the work? Yes, Baba. So he said that, read, read out, I read out. He said, this is the way I wanted you to write. As a conversation. Conversation. And then he said to me, then also you translate and put it in conversation, but at the same time also translate into um, poetry. So then of course I had to do that. And one day he said to me that there should be one prayer. Now this is the most important thing. The prayer he had given me in 1961, one line of Ghazal. And I could not compose, so I had kept that line with me. Then he said to me, just um, write one, one Ghazal prayer. So I remember that line. So I composed seven couplets on that. And when I went to him during night for watch, he said, did you compose the prayer? I said, yes, but bring it. So I brought and I read out and Baba was in a very good mood. So he would just started composing. So this is the rhythm. So he would do like this and compose and dictate me. I would write and by that time another couplet. So you alone exist. Only seven couplets composed by me and the rest 21 couplets Baba himself composed. And what was that? I am stone, I am mosquito, I am bug. So what happened that when we went to Pune and still I was translating that in the book and people would come and Baba would ask someone to recite this prayer so and they would they would hear one day I was staying upstairs and at the time of going for watch I would come down so when I came down someone was laughing at me laughing at me I said why I am laughing. He said, this is the prayer. I am elephant, I am stone, I am this, I am that. This is the prayer. I did not tell him that I, I did this. I kept quiet, I did not say anything. I went to Baba. And I said, Baba, should I change this prayer? Change the prayer? What, what do you want to change? I said, substitute some better words. Baba says, you have no idea how important this prayer is. This is the only prayer which depicts all pervading nature of God. God is God 
and God is also Devi. In Devi also you find God. In everything you find God. In, in mosquito you got you find God. In dogs you you find God. So this is the only prayer where all pervading nature nature of God is depicted. Never change it. So I did not change. Then afterwards, after Baba dropped his body, then of course pilgrims started arriving, arriving there, but they would not see me. I would remain in my room. Door, doors would be remain closed all the time. They did not see me. But one day I went, I wanted to go to the bathroom and one pilgrim saw me. He said, who are you? So I did not say I am one of the Maldi or this. He said I would be in difficulty if I tell him. I am here. So he thought that um, I was a boy working in the garden. <laughs> so he did not say anything. But then he asked other person <coughs> that who is that? He is one of the Maldi. So what does he do? So he says that um, he is writing something Baba has given to him. Next time when I came, I was going to bathroom, he cut hold of me. And he says, give me something to read, I know that you are writing. I said, what to do now? So I give this prayer to him. And I said that this, this, was, this was composed by Baba. And in that, of course, Baba put my name as if I composed. Mm. So, of course, he read and he said, this, this prayer is composed by Baba. And fortunately, unfortunately, that man was not there, who was laughing at me. When afterwards he, yeah. met, uh, he met me, he said, what a sublime prayer. Yeah. <laughs> I said, he was laughing and now he says, what a sublime prayer. <laughs> so so this, this went on, but then in 1967, uh, 60, uh, 67, Baba asked me to compose ghazals. Of course, many books I wrote, but 67 he said, compose ghazals. And I said, Baba, ghazals can be written in Urdu or in Persian, not in Hindi or in, in any other language. Baba says, what do you think? I am Ustad, means master. I talk Dr. Gani. You must be must have heard about him. Dr. Gani who was Baba's friend and then he joined Baba. Right. So I taught Dr. Gani and who had written this song for new life. So I, I taught Dr. Gani and I will teach you, but you try. So again I tried, you heard new haters like Ghazals read out to him, he said, these are very good songs, but not Ghazal. But we will go to, when I, we, go, we will go to Guru Prasad Puna, I will teach it. So, of course, we went there, and one evening, it was summer, and then Baba would retire in his room, all the ventilators and windows and everything would be closed. So summer time and he said, Padma, of course today I will teach you how to write Ghazal. So he was doing this and he gave me one line. And he said, just recite that line in this rhythm. So I recited, half an hour could not understand anything. And I said to Baba Baba, now I am tired. <coughs> and you are also, I don't understand anything. You are perspiring. I said, continue. I continued again for half an hour. Did not follow anything. And I said, Baba, I don't, don't understand now. Please stop it. He said, continue. <laughs> so 15 minutes again I continued. And I got so fed up that I don't, don't understand anything. And Baba is taking so much trouble. I said, Baba, please stop it. I don't understand anything. I said, just go and sit there. And Baba was just lying down. He's still playing that 
drum on his thigh. And I was thinking, what type of nut I am. Baba took so much trouble for me, but I could not understand. I was thinking like this, and just like breeze, it just came. Came and of course, Baba got up, composed. Within five minutes, of course, I composed the rules. <laughs> and since that time, of course, I started writing the rules. Now, about this biography. So one day, Baba, Baba, I had so much work that I would not get time for writing. So I, I, I was fed up, so I would not like writing. But I would know that Baba would ask me. So one day, of course, he says that Ramayana, Ramayana is the book written by Tulsidas, it is the history of Ram. Right. So it is a very good